This particular watch right here is the Ulysse Norden Executive Tourbillon Skeleton. So this to me is an example of everything that Ulysse Norden is doing right, right now. You know, beautifully executed watch, skeletonized dial, Tourbillon, all under $40,000. And I just think that this watch sort of uh, exemplifies you know, both the aesthetic of Yuli Snarden as well as uh, good value. And, you know, I'll let Tim go into a little bit more on the mechanics of the watch and then we can, you know, discuss it further from there. Well, the first thing I love about this watch is that it works as a watch. You can see that the hands are easy to trace and it's actually easier to read than something like a Movado Museum watch because you do have stylized Roman numerals and hour indices. You've also got a gorgeous and completely open tourbillon. The advantage of skeletonizing this dial isn't so much to make the watch look gossamer and evanescent, it is that, but it's also to open up many diagonal views of the tourbillon carriage and its silicon escapement. Now, one feature we should mention is that this is a manual wind watch of the most extraordinary variety. Seven day power reserve, it's actually a little bit more than seven days, 170 to 172 hours. And the watch is 45 millimeters, but in ceramic, ceramic bezel and titanium, the watch is light on the wrist. I need to do a wrist shot of this one because you need to see the 45 millimeter watch, the 43 to 45 millimeter watch, that's, a, that's the oversized range, but they don't all wear the same. The executive can be unwieldy in its precious metal iterations. This one's easy to wear on my 16 centimeter wrist. And again, you've actually got loomed hands. So this is a watch, a rare tourbillon skeleton watch that's designed to be worn on a daily basis. And like Brian said, it has the look of Ulysse Nardin, and with the silicon escapement, it has the tech of Ulysse Nardin. Exactly, and you know what, you've got the titanium case ceramic bezel I just think that it's a beautifully executed watch it came in at the right price point this is just as easily a watch that it, that you know you could see a brand coming and saying it's 65,000 and it becomes a bit of a flop but they didn't do that it came in at, I want to say 38,000 retail right. which was spot-on it was underpriced relative to pretty much all other Turbions in the market from a comparative brand, and you know, it actually was a commercial success. I would say between the Freak, which in every iteration from the Freak Vision to the Freak Out that just came out, the silicon technology that goes into that watch, not just not just in the escapement, which they've been doing for a while, but the constant force mechanism, the full drivetrain, it's stunning stuff. UN has really redefined itself over the last two model years. They're no longer just purveyors of giant yellow gold dive watches. They've become a little bit more sophisticated. I think there's a level of refinement that, you know, to be perfectly fair, was a couple of years in the work and dates mm -hmm. back to the Patrick Hoffman era, mm -hmm. but there's some great stuff that's come out the last two years at SIHH. This isn't even close to their least expensive tourbillon. Yeah. They have an enamel dial. That just came out. <laughs> for, for like 28 grand, yeah. and it's 100 meters water resistant. Yeah, so, you know, I think that the brand's moving in the right direction, and I think that you're gonna see, uh, you know, I, I don't wanna use like a boat reference with Hulie Snart, and I th you know, but riding the ship, so to speak. Um, but, uh, but no, so, moving right along here, I think we should talk about this beautiful platinum beast next. Here on the table we have the 52, I guess the 5204 Blanc Pond. So what that means is it is a perpetual calendar, split second chrono, except it's also a flyback. So this beautiful beast comes in at 42 millimeters, and you know, as mentioned, it's a perpetual calendar, split second chrono with a white dial. So beautiful watch, 42 millimeter platinum case. You'll see on the back, this is actually number one, which, you know, I was surprised when I saw that. Very cool. Wish it was an exhibition case back, but you know, again, you can only ask for so much. And what makes this watch so cool is that, you know, again, paddock charges, I want to say just under 300,000 for this watch. And, you know, obviously, again, there is a difference between this and paddock's 5204. But that being said, this watch is, you know, listed on our website for under thirty-five thousand. Where else can you get a split-second perpetual calendar flyback chrono in platinum from a brand like Plum Pond for under thirty-five thousand? I mean, again, that's just where there is such extreme value in the market, right for the picking. This is literally an overwhelming watch. Platinum class, platinum case, big, deep, heavy. You put this on your wrist, you can't ignore the fact that you're wearing something exceptional. It's not overbearing, it's a lovely kind of luxury. When this watch is on the wrist, you have the feel that 
you're intimately connected with your watch in a way that a titanium, a ceramic, a carbon case never can be. We just saw the Elise Norden in ceramic and titanium. This is almost the counterpoint to that because it is so physically massive, so traditional, and with twin column wheels and vertical clutch mechanism, you're getting a hell of a lot of tech in this timepiece. Now, about that solid case back, I have seen Blancpain on some of these higher-end complications honor requests for custom display case backs. So if you ever send the watch in for service at Blancpain, ask. The worst they can say is no, and they're likely to say yes. I've seen that request honored a couple of times. It would be worthwhile because what you're getting is based on a Frédéric Piquet 1186 base. So it is the 1185, but with the flyback and the split second functionality. And it is rare to find a watch that is both a split second chronograph and a flyback that can be reset and restarted with a single push. Plus, again, perpetual calendar chronograph, whether you're a lawyer billing time or you're dating memos and correspondence, there's a complication on this watch that you're going to use every single day. Yeah, and, you know, I do think that the dial, you know, there are some uh, people in the chat talking about how the dial looks a little bit cramped. And it I is. Do, I, it is. I mean, I do tend to agree that they smushed a lot on there, and I think that they could have probably made you know, a lot a lot of the features a little bit smaller in, in order to fit a little bit better. That said, the 42 millimeter version is the one you want because if you're willing to forego the split second functionality, this is what the 38 looks like, guys. So all but the split second functionality, this is the steel Le Mans perpetual calendar chronograph. Also a flyback chronograph, also a perpetual calendar, automatic winding and stainless steel. One distinction this one has is that you can actually see the movement. It does have a display case back. These watches were built with both solid and display case backs. Like I said, you gotta ask.